You know, I always forget about this online comic book store, and they sure don't make buying comics easy. Hey there, today I have an unboxing video and in this video I'm going to open up three orders that I placed with Gmart Comics over the last several months. And these orders, uh, it was a mixture of some books that were on sale, some retailer incentives, but the site makes it difficult, or not necessarily the site itself, the interface, but how the comics are, I want to say like enabled for sale or when they become active. There are certain days of the week when you can place pre-orders on incentives, other days of the week things go on sale, you have new comic book day uh, releases from the previous week. The interface is not completely intuitive and I feel like maybe there could be some design updates for it, but as I have uh, purchased from other sites that are maybe a bit dated, I have figured out a way to work with them. But Gmart is really unique in that it almost depends on the timing to find the deals. And with these three orders, not only ha do I forget about Gmart Comics in terms of placing orders sometimes, I also kind of forget to open the orders that I do place. So it kind of makes me feel bad, like I'm spending all of this time prepping and analyzing and placing these orders. And then uh, these specific orders kind of sit in my queue to unbox, which is why I'm gonna do three at once to make sure I get them all out of the way. And what I have found is, in going back through my order history, I have some pretty good books in here, and so I'm very curious to see how they grade out, because the these sorts of books that I'm picking up from Gmart, I would say are along the same lines of books that I would find uh, Midtown, Things from Another World, Third Eye Comics, and like all retailer incentives, what is interesting is to kind of see if the books have retained value, if any of them are worth sending in for professional grading and so forth. And so I want to unbox these three orders and show you the books that I picked up. If you are interested to see what I paid for the books and how my purchase prices line up with current fair market values, please consider becoming a Moneyball Comics YouTube channel member where I release order summary breakdowns using my spreadsheets and formulas for determining value as those videos are now exclusively available for channel members. But first, let's take a look at the books that I picked up from Gmart Comics across three separate orders. All right, here are the three orders that I placed with Gmart over the last several months, and I wanna go ahead and unpack them all together just because the while the books are unique inside, I think the theme of the books are all roughly the same, so it made sense to me to kind of include them all at once, plus I'm able to get through my unboxings a little quicker. Uh, these, these were sent kind of a combination of the USPS and UPS. I was able to unlock free shipping on all three of the orders, so it's really kind of up to Gmart to decide how they want to ship the books. There's no option to choose USPS uh, versus UPS or anything else. I did have to pay for an additional bag and board service, but it's a minimal fee, uh, especially worth it to me to unlock free shipping so I don't mind paying that. Let's go ahead and get these opened up. Okay, uh, so the books were well packed. Um, as I mentioned, I purchased the Silver Age bag and board. Uh, so across the three orders, what's nice is that I don't have to rebag and board any of these books. The, the way that they're packaged, uh, what I'm able to do is very safely get all of the books out of the cardboard and tape custom wrapping that they do, but the the bags and boards are not really affected. A lot of times what ends up happening is I'll pay for the bags and boards and then everything is kind of taped over, then I'm peeling tape off and I have to rebag it. So I do appreciate the fact that I'm paying for these and I'm able to reuse it. All right, so let's take a look at the books that I picked up between late 2023 and early 2024. This is West of Sundown, number one. This is a one in 25 retail incentive. This is a, a series by Vault Comics with cover art by Tim Daniel. Next is Kilchella, 
from Scout Comics. This is Kilchella number one. Uh, this is cover art by Tula Lote, one of my favorite artists. So what I end up doing a lot is when Gmart will have a sale, I'll just control F right on the page and I'm able to search and sort specifically by uh, any keywords or artists. So sometimes I'll put 25 copy or 1 colon 25 or Lote and then, and then I'll go ahead and parse the results and this was not a particular story or anything that I was interested in, but love her art specifically and was able to grab this on sale. And this was the only variant cover on Kilchella number one from Scout Comics. Next is X-Men Hellfire Gala number one cover art by Art Adams. This is a one in 25 with a lot of the Art Adams covers picking up heat. That was another search string that I was doing on incentives that were discounted was trying to find 1 in 25s by Adams. He's done a few of these Emma Frost White Queen covers. I'm kind of mixed on them. There's part of it that looks a little childlike, which creeps me out, but then it is Art Adams and just the amount of detail that he puts into all of his covers. He's basically exclusively just doing covers hasn't done interiors for for many years to my knowledge but there's always there's just a fine line between some of his work being just a, a little too childlike that creeps me out a little bit but I think that's also part of the attraction is that his art kind of sits between that and with his books being so collectible I wanted to grab that one uh, this is a little bit of an older book this is Captain America Reborn number five and I picked this up this was a one in 25 with cover art by David Finch. This book is easy to find, but I just really loved this David Finch art, like the detail in his costume and the reflection on the shield. I just, I really like this. and was able to get this for about four bucks on Gmart, which was great. Next is World Tree number three. This is the one in 25 retailer incentive cover art by Aaron Campbell. I thought this was pretty interesting, kind of the one of these covers, the more you look at it, the more detail and things that you see in it. The World Tree books, I think while the story is still interesting, a lot of these incentives just haven't taken off in terms of value. I still really like them. I, it makes it easy to collect because they're easy to find and very affordable. And I'm pretty sure you can still find this one on Gmart. And the next one is probably the most expensive book across the three orders. This is Barnstormers number one from Dark Horse Comics. This is an interesting story because uh, it's a collaboration between Scott Snyder and Tula Lote. And this was originally released as a digital only story on Comixology. And then it was released in print later on through Dark Horse Comics. Uh, this is cover art by Jenny Frizen. And it was one of these books that was just sold out everywhere except Gmart. Uh, and I was fortunate enough to grab this at the time. Really gorgeous cover art by Jenny Frizen. And along with Lotte and Adams and Frizen, sometimes I'm just even blindly buying a lot of their covers. Because chances are, not only am I going to love them, they're typically desirable amongst many collectors, which is always part of my criteria when I'm buying books. Here's another Frizen cover. This is Something is Killing the Children, number 22. This is the die cut. There were several die cut variants of this book. This is just the regular die cut. The bloody version has red spots all over the cover. And there are some first appearances in this book too. So we'll see if uh, Something is Killing the Children ever takes off, uh, you know, and it becomes kind of its own universe, particularly as a streaming series. Some of those first character appearances in the earlier issues, I think, will be a little bit more collectible than the others. Moving on to the second order, this is Batman Superman World's Finest, number 23. This is the 1 in 50 retailer incentive with cover art by Michael Walsh. This reminded me of the Detective Comics jock variant featuring the Joker, just the same kind of style, same color palette the bats and everything. And as soon as I saw the cover art release for this one, I wanted to make sure that I picked up a copy. This one is Wonder Woman number five. This is the new series of Wonder Woman written by Tom King. And this is the one in 25 with cover art by Chris Delera. And what I liked about this one, I, I really 
picked up on the lighting on this one, plus it almost had a painted style to it. I don't know, it's just something about the finished art on here that really stood out and was unique to me. Not a rare variant, pretty easy to find, but was able to pick that up on sale at Gmart as well. Another DC incentive, this is Superman at number 10. This is the 1 in 25 retailer incentive with cover art by Leslie Lyrics Lee. This character that was introduced earlier in the Superman run, her name is Marilyn Moonlight, and this is her origin. So kind of, I mean, if you didn't see the Superman logo there, you would ask maybe is it the DC's gender-swapped Moon Knight, or who is it? But I figured if it's a modern key featuring the character and her origin, then this would be one of her early covers that will be collectible. Next up is another recently released book, Cobra Commander number one. This is the one in 10 retailer incentive. All of these Energon Universe, uh, Skybound, Transformers, G.I. Joe, Void Rivals, uh, I'm digging all of it. And I've heard that the Cobra Commander series is such a good read. And I'm starting to get through my orders that I've placed where these books have come in and I can't wait to find the standard covers so I can read those instead of re reading these incentives. Here's another incentive, uh, Cobra Commander number one. This is the one in 25 with art by Steve Epting. I think of Captain America when I think of Steve Epting art. And not to say that Captain America and Cobra Commander go together, but there's something about Epting's art here on this Cobra Commander number one that made me think of that. I just thought this was so well done and so interesting and happy to pick up the 1 in 25 on that one as well. Another G.I. Joe book. This is G.I. Joe 303. This is the 1 in 10 with cover art by Brad Walker. I am collecting all of the 1 in 10s, so I specifically look for these. They're easy to find because I think the, as I just mentioned, the Energon Universe slash Skybound G.I. Joe Transformers books, I think they're very popular right now. A lot of people are ordering them, so these 1 in 10s are very, very easy to find, and a lot of times you can find them for cover price, the same price that you're paying for cover A, and really like Brad Walker's art. This is Star Wars The High Republic number 3. This is the 1 in 25 with cover art by David Marquez. A lot of Marquez covers are very sneaky, valuable, and collectible. This one is not. <laughs> it is still out there. It is a 1 in 25. I thought this was just very clever cover art with the lightsaber with the logo in the background. And while the High Republic Season 3 or, or 3rd series maybe has lost some of its popularity, I think Disney, Star Wars, Disney+, Plus, everybody's all in on the High Republic. And again, just a great combo of cover artists that I like, series that I collect, universe that I love, and lastly, it was on sale. <laughs> so kind of checks all of those boxes. Moving on to the third order, this is Wolverine at number 40. I talked about Art Adams before. Here is another Art Adams cover. Pretty cool Wolverine artwork here. And I'll just say this, it does feel to me like the Art Adams covers featuring female characters are the ones that pop more than the male characters but I still thought that the the perspective on this one too, I mean, Art Adams is such a master. I think it just kind of goes unnoticed where you can see from his torso to the face to the claws, it's just jumping off of the page coming at you. So that one was really easy to find and was under ratio. This is Uncanny Avengers number five, a one in 25 with cover art by Stephanie Hans. Hans is another wonderful cover artist. This Fall of X tie-in maybe fell a little flat towards the end of the series, but this team was the, was put together as pretty cool, featuring Deadpool, Rogue, Psylocke, Captain America, and wanted to grab this one since it too was well under ratio. This is Superior Spider-Man number two with cover art by Clayton Crane. This is another artist that just seems to always have a particular following, desirability with his books and covers. Crane's art almost feels liquid, so I wanted to take a chance and pick up this 1 in 25. Next is G.I. Joe 302, another 1 in 10 Brad Walker on cover art, retailer incentive. I just love these. For as long as uh, Walker's doing these 1 in 10s, I'm going to keep picking them up. 
And we have Deviant number two from Image Comics. This is a James Tinian story. This series began in late 2023 around the holidays with this Santa Claus themed character being the focal point of this horror series. And I kind of like with certain cover artists, I'm always buying books from certain creators and James Tinian is towards the top of my list. And so I'm picking up that one. That was a one in 25. Also, the Deviant number two, this is the one in 10. I really thought this was a just a creepy cover with him looking through this window. Just, oh, love that one. And then the last book, From the Last Order, Superman number nine. Again, just like the Marilyn Moonlight book, uh, if you showed me these covers without a logo, I would not guess Superman uh, as far as the first guess of what series this book belonged to. Uh, this is a 1 in 25 with cover art by Nathan Zerdy. And like the Barnstormers Jenny Frizen book, this was just one of those ratio incentives that popped on release, was sold out just about everywhere, and was able to find it on Gmart for a really good price. So those are the books, uh, a really kind of neat collection of 1 in 10s, 1 in 25s, and even a 1 in 50 that got in there across the three orders. A lot of similarities between the three, so you can kind of see which books I'm targeting. But when I said that I kind of forget about Gmart, a lot of it is because I'm not always in tune to when sites are having their sales. A lot of times there'll be flash sales, maybe a one day only or a weekend sort of thing. And it's something that if you're looking at a number of stores, you kind of have to keep track of. I would recommend subscribing to newsletters if they will text you and you don't mind getting texted from these stores. Uh, they'll often message you about a particular, maybe exclusive release, pre-order, final order, cutoff details, and other sales to kind of help you schedule and prep for buying. But I've really shifted the majority of my retailer incentive purchasing to placing orders like this periodically where the books have significantly dropped under ratio. I think the only book that I paid for at ratio was the Barnstormers number one by Jenny Frizen. It was one of those that I just was telling myself I have to have it and ended up paying the ratio price just because it was the only place that had it available for sale and even eBay was selling it for way above ratio. And then I just sort of relatively compare the values, the cost, availability, and decide to make a purchase like that, whereas all of the others were well under ratio. And I was glad that I decided to exercise a little bit of patience and wait for these. And now I think it'll be interesting to grade these books out, see if any of them are 9-8 candidates, as historically I do get quite a few 9-8 candidates from Gmart. So with these well packed and shipped with no issue, I do expect to have a nice handful of 9-8 candidates to send in with my next pre-screen. And it's a good example of a few orders where I didn't panic and I didn't overdo it. And I think when I do start to look at the fair market values of these books and compare them to values if they were graded, I'm probably going to find that the trend continues that these ratios will come out and they will drop uh, typically about 50% off of the ratio price. And I have found just waiting it out to be the better strategy and will continue to do that going forward. Thanks for watching. Happy collecting and see you next time.